Trezor Model T. Hey, I'm Crypto Bo, and today I'm gonna do a quick review of the Trezor Model T. I already f this up because I did this review once and apparently was not recording. And so as you can see, I've already unboxed it. This is this would be a uh, red flag as an unsecured device, but instead I'm just gonna keep on going forward and uh, show you what it would look like if it were actually secure. Oh my gosh, look at that, this beautiful Secure Trezor Model T. Ooh. Now, I've been using a Trezor 1 for quite some time, and this is a pretty significant upgrade, uh, both in terms of money and in terms of the kind of coins that are supported by it. My screen recording did not f up, so I'll put out a setup tutorial eventually, but right now we're just gonna do a quick review going over some of the pros and cons. And honestly, uh, I would still buy it, but there are some major cons to the Trezor Model T. So stick around to the end to see what those are. Um, but if at any point you want to buy the Trezor Model T, then click the link in the description. It'll take you directly to the Trezor store. And you can pick up either the Model T or Model 1 if you want to better secure your cryptocurrency. So let's talk about the good, and then I'll get into the bad. And a great place to start is just with security. Now, the Trezor is basically the gold standard as far as security is concerned for a lot of reasons. Uh, chief among them is that all of the code, including the firmware on the device, is open source. So you could technically build your own Trezor if you really wanted to, and people have done it. But the reason why open source code is so important is that it allows a lot of people to take a look at the code, people who understand what they're looking for, find bugs, and so they can report them directly to Trezor. The more eyes you have looking at this, you know, at the nitty gritty of the code of these devices, the more secure you can feel in using them. And again, Trezor is great for that. Le Notably, one of the main competitors of Trezor, Ledger, does not open source their firmware code. And, you know, they haven't had any significant security breaches that we know of yet, but, you know, we may not even know if they did. Apart from that, just like the other Trezor models, private keys are securely stored on the device and they don't leak out to the public. This is an air gap device that only works when it's plugged directly into your computer. There's no Wi-Fi capability or Bluetooth capability, which is a huge pro for me. But I think one of the coolest things about the Trezor Model T is that you can use it not only for securing your cryptocurrency, but also as a password manager or for securing your GPG keys. You can use native Trezor password manager, which you can see here, to store and manage your passwords, which makes this a pretty cool uh, device that not only competes with other like cryptocurrency hardware wallets, but also with things like YubiKey, which is a password management device. The other cool thing about the Model T and the thing that really separates it from a lot of other cryptocurrency wallets, including the Trezor Model 1, is that it allows support for Monero, as well as a couple of other uh, cryptocurrencies that are not typically supported by other hardware wallets. For instance, if you wanna be able to store Cardano, you can't get a Trezor 1, you have to get a Trezor Model T. Same with Tezos and EOS. Also has a cool little touch screen, which will allow you to get access to your device, which means that you don't have to do all the annoying clicking that you have to do with some of the other models like a Ledger Nano S or a Trezor Model 1. It also makes use of the Trezor Suite app, uh, so you can track all your cryptocurrency, see what you have, make sure everything's secure, enable passwords so you can um, more discreetly look at your cryptocurrency and um, yeah, just generally manage uh, your wallet better. Nate Martin of 99Bitcoins, if you've seen his review of the Trezor Model T, uh, says that the Ledger software is better, but that was produced in 2020 before the Trezor suite had fully rolled out. So, you know, I don't know if you want to trust him. So the Trezor Model T is pretty cool, but it has a lot of significant negatives and drawbacks that may make you reconsider your purchase. First off, and least annoyingly, it comes with a USB-A to USB-C cable, which means that Mac users who only have USB-C uh, inputs uh, have to get some sort of connecting device, which is a little annoying, but not that bad. It's pretty standard actually across the industry uh, with a lot of, you know, hardware wallets are doing the USB-A to USB-C. So whatever, I have a USB-C to USB-C cord. It's all Gucci. The touch screen is cool, but if you have like fat fingers, you may end up pressing the wrong button from time to time and you may end up using up some of your chances to input your pin code just to the fact that the, the screen is sort of tiny and hard to navigate. Another con is they don't have a lot of native support for coins in the Trezor suite. You know, like you'll have the big hitters there. You have your Dogecoin, your Ethereum, your Bitcoin, you know, Litecoin, all, all those sorts of things. But like I said earlier, it does allow you to use your hardware wallet to secure your Monero, but you're going to have to use Monero software. Um, so it doesn't come native with native support of Monero. You have to use third-party software directly from the Monero Foundation in order to make that, in order to make Monero are usable with your Trezor Model T. You know, it's pretty good. I don't think any hardware wallet has native Monero support. I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure it's 
you know, you're gonna have to do that across the board no matter what hardware wallet you use. It's just a little bit annoying, especially given that one of the reasons why I would upgrade to the Model T is for Monero and Cardano support, for instance, but neither of those coins are supported natively in the Trezor suite. So that's something that I hope that they work on in the future. And the final con is just the price. It's $195, which makes it one of the more expensive hardware wallets out there on the market. Quite a bit more expensive than the comparable Ledger Nano X. So it's a little bit pricey, but at the same time, if you're looking for what is basically the best crypt, uh, hardware wallet on the market, yeah, you're gonna have to pay a bit of a premium for it. The price honestly has been fluctuating quite a bit. I've seen some videos a little bit earlier this year where people had purchased it for $180 and then also some videos where people had purchased it for $220, uh, but it's currently listed at $195 on the product website. But like I said, for the sort of things that you're gonna be able to do with it, using it as a password manager, GPG manager, being able to download Monero uh, and secure your Monero with it, as well as your Cardano, you can stake Cardano with your hardware wallet. I think that it makes it worth it. And it's a hardware wallet that I would absolutely purchase again. Overall, it's a secure option with easy setup and maintenance. It's sleek and intuitive and a great option for moderate to experienced users. If you've got the money to spend, then it's absolutely worth it. But if you just want a more secure place to store your Bitcoin and Ethereum, you don't care about Monero or Cardano, then I would just suggest picking up the Model 1, which you can also see by clicking the link in the description and going directly to the Trezor store. If you want to learn more about securing your cryptocurrency and avoiding crypto scams, then go ahead and click this playlist over here. Or if it's not for you, then click this one over here for my review of the Trezor Model 1. I'm CryptoBell. Thanks for watching, y'all. Stay safe out there.